Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to show you how to cut and sew kaleidoscope stack and whack quilt blocks. So my husband Matt has some of these already picked out and he's going to show us how to do this. Let's go find him. Hey Donna, how you doing? Fine. You got the kaleidoscopes? Yeah, I've got, I've got, you know, I found this runner in the shop. This was one that we did a couple years ago. I remember. And when I used to cut these, and these pie shapes that are made, as you know, are just outstanding. And they're very time consuming to make. And, but I found a couple ways that I like to do them now. And this was a runner we did, Donna. And what's really cool is the, the back of the runner was the fabric that I used to cut out these kaleidoscope pie shapes that, that then make ex unbelievable designs. Yeah. Individual designs, just, just really cool. So can you show us how to cut them? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. And by the way, Don, this was, as you remember, this was a quilt we did, which is extremely popular too. Look at the flowers around here. Yeah. I mean, that's... All out of one fabric. Awesome. All out of one fabric. It's very cool. So this is something that takes a really long time to cut. It's very difficult cutting, but Matt's got the method down now, so he can show us how to cut some more. So. Let's Shall go we go do some? some? Let's do Let's it. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Before we start cutting, I want to show you how the kaleidoscope works. I've got a hinged mirror here. It's two mirrors with a hinge. You can find this at your local quilt store. They probably have one you can try out on your fabrics. Now, if you move this around, you can get an idea of the different kaleidoscope blocks that you might get. So I think my favorite one would be, oh yeah, one right there with all the roses. Isn't that fun? So let's grab our fabrics and we'll get Matt to start cutting out these blocks. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the repeat on this fabric. Almost all fabrics have a repeat. And what do I mean by a repeat? You might have heard that and are not sure what it is. By looking at this flower here, down here, and if you follow your hand at the same level and go out, you will find that this flower is repeated right here again. You can see the same leaves are below it. It's been repeated. And everything in between also gets repeated at certain intervals, certain amount of inches. You can find it quickly by going to the selvages and just picking a letter, a number, a color. I'm going to pick this letter K. And I'm going to go to the next K along the selvage, which is right here on that Tori. And it's about 23 inches, almost 24 inches. That's very typical for larger scale prints. That's perfect. So I go, I've chosen to cut the K to the K. I line it up the fabric straight on the bottom. On the bottom down here, it's very straight. I'm going to put my ruler right through the K. I can see I'm lined up pretty well. And just cut it. It doesn't have to be super exact, but close. And now I'm going to go down to the next K to get my first repeat. Super. The next step is to split the fold at the bottom. Very simple. I'm, I'm going to put my scissors in. I'm pulling towards me with the top blade of the scissors. It keeps it straight. For the kaleidoscopes that we're going to do today, I'm going to need eight of these sets. There'll be a total of 16 pieces if you separate them, and eight total sets. Repeated. You just go from K to K, or whatever you pick to choose to cut on. That's what you do eight times. The next step is to iron the fabric. In this case, with these kaleidoscopes, you don't want to press like crazy. You just want to get anything that's definitely wrinkled out. But for the most part, what I do is just gently, I have these nice irons, just gently go back and forth. And as long as I use the same amount of pressure on each fabric, they'll all be relatively the same. You don't want to iron hard and stretch things. That's the key, because then it will be hard to line the pieces up. Okay, I'm ready to start uh, the important pinning part of this project. Um, I've got this magnifying light, and 
I've got it lined up so that my selvages are on the top. I like to start pinning opposite the selvages. I have found that is much easier to do. Um, and I'm, here's how I get started. I will take a larger size pin. It's here, it's probably about two inches or so. With a, with a nice big head on it, because this pin is coming in and out of the fabric as I pin. The idea now is for me to pin exactly in the same spot on each of the eight fabrics. Um, I have this lighted magnifying glass that I use, and I'm going to bring it to the left-hand corner. I have the selvages on the top. I'll just come to the left-hand corner here. Now I'm going to find a spot that I like in the corner, relatively close to it, about high enough, about an inch in and an inch out. It's going to be one, there's little gold uh, dots on this flower that I can see through this magnifying glass that I'm going to use to pin. So I'm going to take my pin over here, and what I'm going to do is follow this little narrow flower down right here, and I'm going to pin right in the gold dot that's right below it on the green part of the flower. And this was, I laid this up relatively accurately, at least in this spot, after I ironed, so this is becoming very easy to do, and I just pick the fabrics up. There's that gold dot. Pick that next fabric up. Just I just push the fabric up the pin. up. You want to keep the pin relatively straight up and down, not angled like that. And I keep picking up the pieces of fabric, find that gold dot, put the pin straight down on it. This is not that easy to do, but if you, you know, with a little focus and patience, you can get it. Bam. Now, the next, after you have them all pinned, you push the pin all the way through, all the way through to where it stops. I'm going to take my thumb, I'm going to press that, and my forefinger is right here. So here's my forefinger, my thumb. My forefinger is just on this side of the pin. I'm pressing down. This, keep the fabric as flat as you can, this is important. I'm going to push my mirror out of the way because everything's been pinned. Now I push down right by the head of the pin till I touch, just touch my forefinger with the pin. You might want to wear a little band-aid or something because if the pin is sharp, you know, it'll hurt. It won't cut you, but it'll hurt. Don't push too much. I pushed, I've got it on my finger. I can feel it. And now I'm going to push it right back through the fabric. Now I can take out the pin that I pinned with. Now you'll see, there is the pin right there as it went through the fabric, making this super accurate. I can already see, check this out, these little lines here that are matching up on the fabric. You can see it's being pinned very accurately. Really cool, extremely cool method. I love this. You just take your time, take your time. Okay, now what I do for, for the next pin, the spacing is important. The way I choose the distance to pin it's about six inches, or about the, when I put my thumb and finger just like this, about there, but I always have to pick a spot that's easy to see. In this case, I'm just going to come right here to the tip of this flower bud here, right here. I see a little spot right there, and I'm going to pin right on there and get that matched up nicely, get that started. Going real well. Okay, I got the last piece coming up here. Excellent. I'm going to push the mirror away. And I'm going to push the pin down to where it's on the top of the fabric. Take my thumb and forefinger. My other finger's next to it. Press it down. Get a smaller straight pin. These are smaller straight pins. You can use any size that you're comfortable with. But it's smaller than the big one that I'm using. About an inch. Press it down, feel my forefinger right there. Keep the pin head down on the big one so everything stays good. Come out, push, excellent. Right there, there's my second pin. Right there, you can see the little silver right there a little bit. And this thing is coming together. It's coming together. I'm very happy with those first two pins. Excuse me just a second here. I'm going to continue now, five or six inches around, finding spots that are very easy to see all the way around. I'll go down to this edge, and I'll head right up this edge, and just continue all the way around until I finish down here. If 
five or six inches apart, but it's spots that are easy for you to pin. That's, that's the crucial part. We are ready to do the next step. We have our pins in, and now I'm going to do something that I have affectionately named the earthquake. And I have my beautiful wife Donna here to help me. And Donna, if you'll, what we do is each grab a pin on the edges, towards the edge here. So my thumb's on the pin and her thumb's on the pin there. And we're going to lift it up about three or four inches and stretch it tight. Not exceptionally tight, just taut. Now Donna, you go ahead. She's going to do a little shake. Okay, stop. A little tighter now, Donna. And I'm going to shake. And what this does is it allows the fabric to settle where they naturally go. And if the pinning is accurate, this will put them more on top of each other. And Donna, you go ahead and go one more time. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go once more and then we'll set it down. Just keep it tight and then you just set it down. Okay, so the next step is to take the pins out. We've done the earthquake. I'm gonna press down on the pin right where it connects to the fabric and just pull it out. And that keeps the fabric right there. It's not going here, I'll do one more. Press down, grab the head of the pin and just pull it out. Okay, once you pull the pins out, it's important that you leave the project pretty much right where it is. I'm, I'm going to cut five inch strips now for the first cuts, and then we're going to cut those strips into triangles. So I'm going to use this line right here. I'm just going to line everything up on this line right here to be sure that I get all these layers cut off. I'll set that on the two up there and the two over here. I'm going to put my weight down to steady it up there for me. Open up my cutter. There's eight layers here. There we are. Okay, I cut the five inch piece. Now I'm going to transfer this piece strip to another board very carefully. I'm going to pick here. I'm going to pick here. I'm going to pinch with my thumbs and just very carefully come over here. Set it down about the middle of the board. Just like so. I want to show you this. It's almost like a 3D image now. You can see how the flower extends down into the eight layers very accurately. That's what you can get with this type of cutting method. And you can see all along the flower lines here. Same thing. Awesome. It's looking good. It's looking good. The next step is to cut my pieces into the triangles for those eight pieces of the pie. And I'm going to use this 45 degree triangle. And we like to have a flat top, so to speak, so I'm going to start a quarter inch. It's easier to sew the pieces together without it being straight to the point. So I'm going to place it to the right and be sure I can get all the layers so I can't come over too far, but I want to get as much as I can so we make good use of our material. There we are with a quarter inch. I use a weight down at the bottom here for stability and my hand here for stability. And I'm going to go ahead, you have to step to your right just a little bit, James, thank you, and cut this. I really got to press down with that left hand and my right hand and just go straight to the floor. Bam. Done. Now, I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to take my weight, switch it to the other side, or, or the side I cut, I should say. And I'm going to I keep my hand here just for stability. I don't want that template moving. And now, James, I need some more room. Thank you. And now I'm going to press down and I'm going to cut left-handed. Right there. So, what you have when you're done is that beautiful little pie piece. And you can see here, I'm going to show you. You see these leaves, and you look at them, it's all the same. So that's how you cut them, and now I'm going to go through and just repeat the steps, the same steps, using the angle where it belongs, setting it up, quarter inch down, and I'm going to keep cutting all the way down the line. If you'd like to see the rest of the tutorial, check back for part two. Thanks for watching. We welcome your comments and your questions.